Yeah. Our topic is therapeutic communication. Yeah. I don't agree. Therapeutic communication. So in therapeutic communication, we go through for this semester, therapeutic communication, we go through the concept of communication. Then we go to what therapeutic communication is all about. Hello, we go through the healthy relationship, communication styles, communication technologies, communication skills, counseling and critical thinking skills. Okay, so by the way, let's say go through therapeutic communication. What is it? Therapeutic communication. The concept of communication. I guess you all been talking about, you don't know the concept of communication. Hmm? Concept of communication. What is communication? What is it about? Is it different from therapeutic communication or what? So let's go through in the end. We we'll know what the core concept is all about. Okay, so by the end of this lecture, you will be able to define the communication process and identify its components. Describe the component system of communication. Identify the factors that impact on verbal communication. Describe the importance of nonverbal communication in healthcare settings. Also, we'll be able to also discuss the factors that impact on nonverbal communication. We identify communication style and factors that influence the next patient relationship. You can also, we also go through the levels and types of communication in healthcare. So let's, let's, by, let's start what we all know what communication is about. And you know, effective communication can improve patients' well-being and outcomes. And without effective communication, poor communication can also have, um, can also bring about what? healing problems because if you are not able to communicate well with the patient, the patient will not understand the healing process. And for that matter, the healing process can also delay. Okay, so all patients, irrespective of... Okay, what is communication? What is communication? What is communication all about? Mm -hmm. In everyday life, we communicate with our individuals, our peers, our subordinates, and our employees. Okay, so from the Latin word communis, it means oh, what? we need to share something. Share something. And so, communication is what the activity of conveying information through the exchange of your thoughts. The message that you are being sent or information, it can be in the form of what a speech, visuals, signals, writing or behavior. Yes, what is it? Please, sorry for the interruption. Huh? Please, sorry for the interruption. I was you are what? I, read, I said, please, I'm sorry for the interruption. I can't even hear you. The sound is very low. Hello. Hello. I'm listening. Yes, please. I was saying that. Sorry for the interruption. Please, I wanted to make a suggestion, please. It what seems is it? some people yes, please. It seems some people are online, but they've forgotten to meet themselves. So we are finding they can do what? please it seems some people are on like they've joined the class, but they've forgotten to mute themselves. So they are making noise at the background, making us have a kind of difficult to hear you. So if you can mute the whole class. You can so use what? So please, if you can mute the whole class. So that those I've done that people. already. Okay, thank you very much. And you can also ask them to oh, you can also ask them to mute themselves. You have all been muted. I've done all this. Mute all. I've done that. Madam, please. You muted you muted the, the video part, but the uh, audio.
Okay. As I was saying, communication is what? It is an activity of conveying information through the exchange of what? Your thoughts, messages, no or the information. And it can be by speech, as we are speaking now. It can also be by visuals, as you are doing now. Then signals, written or behavior of people. No okay. And you, for the purpose of this, contest this lecture you can say communication is what any means of exchanging information or feelings it can be between two or more people mm? and you know communication is what the basic component of um human relationships mm? and you know nursing we are supposed to keep what nurse clients was relationship keep it better okay Pay, pay patients on the world needs that kind of what relationship where you can what talk with them freely, answer their questions freely, be with them, listen to them, active listening, and providing whatever things that they need on the hospital to be able to what get healing on the world. So. In nursing communication is what, as I said, is vehicle for what establishing what a therapeutic what relationship with the patient. Therapeutic means what we go there. So the quality of what patient client relationship is dependent on the quality of what communication between you, the nurses, and the patient is very important. Yeah. Principles of what. Okay, so these are the principles of communication. So communication is a process we go through. Yes, it's a process, it's a cyclical. And a communication is not linear, but what's circular. You go and come back to the same thing. Then communication is complex. And you know what you say is not, it's irreversible. You can apologize, but still it is there. It's, you can't erase it. So communication involves the total of personality. Okay, so now, as a process, communication as a process. The communication as a process. So what do we mean by communication being a process? So effective communication, what is a process where a message what is received. So when you are communicating with people, you receive a message. Message is very important. And when you see the message, you need to also um, know the intent or the message. Mm? So you need to understand what the message is about. Mm? And who does that? The receiver. Mm? So you should understand what the receiver intent. Mm? You know how to what? misinterpret whatever 
the intention of the message. So that is why it's, it is very important to be able to work. you as a uh, receiver understand what is being what communicated to you. So as I said, a common mistake that people make is what focus only on the delivery of message rather than how it is received and communicated to that person. We don't have to do it. Communication is a two-way affair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we extend of information? And as I said, it also, it's a process. You go through a process. So we have the communication channel. Okay. So we have the noise. So the channel, you have the encoding, decoding. Then the senders, that is the context. Then the receiver. Content. So we have the sender's content, receiver content, and in the end, there's supposed to be what a feedback. If the message is well understood, there is a message. Mm -hmm. There's supposed to be what a feedback of whatever you sent. It's very important. So extent of information involves both what, as I said, the sending and receiving message between two or more people. You need to know the content of what the message is about, and then it's followed by what. The feedback, as I said, indicating that the information was what, well understood or requires further clarification. So that is the process of communication. Communication process. Uh -huh. so, so we know the face-to-face -face communication involves what? I said a sender, a message, a receiver, a response or feedback. So that is a, these are the elements, the components components of or elements of the communication process. We have the sender, we have the message, a receiver who receive and a response or, or feedback. So the sender formula that is encode an idea and the message through communication. And the channel is what? It delivers the channel, the message to the receiver, then the channel where the pitch, the message is delivered. Who receive or act on the message that is that person coach <coughs> the message and know the receiver responds by formulating his or own message mm, and communicates back to the sender. Okay, so that is the components we have the sender, message, receiver, or feedback. Okay, so what is the sender? What do we mean by sender? So the sender is a person or group of person mm, to convey a message to another and can be considered the source word, a coder. So I said the encoder, mm, as you can see from the screen. You see the pictures on the screen and you know that they are communicating. Mm. Okay, as the source of the message, you need to be clear. So an ambiguous message leads towards misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. So as the source of the message, you need to be clear about why you are what communicating. Clear information is very important. And what you want to what communicate, then the people should understand what you want to what communicate. You also need to be confident that the information you are communicating is useful and what accurate. So what are some of the responsibilities of the sender? You need to be certain about the content, the intent, what you mean mm, before attempting what the communication. You also have to know the, uh, the receiver well. So who am I sending this message? Is it my peer? Is it my boss? Is it about the, 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 my, my, my subordinate or whoever? So whichever message that you want to send, you need to know the receiver. It depends so that you'll be able to write what the intent, the content. Selecting the proper medium, giving the particular words, circumstances, and timing is very important. So that is the sender. So sender is what, these are the responsibilities of the sender. What are the message? message. Oh, and so the message is information that you want to communicate. 
So if your message is too lengthy, disorganized, or contains errors, you can express the message to be what, as I said, misunderstood and misinterpreted. Even if you don't use your abbreviations well, you can change the meaning of the whole thing. Use of poor verbal and body language can also confuse the person. So avoid the use of what the swear words in your message. They can give rise to disrespect and anger and lead to what misunderstanding. So a person who communicates by swearing appears what ignorance. So take note of this rude, ill-tempered, and difficult. So these are there are times, especially when communicating with authority figures, that swearing is absolutely what in it's not good. Okay, so I around children who parrot what you hear is what irresponsible. Because children learn everything that you 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 they see around you. Mm -hmm. When you are talking, they ask so much questions. So this when you talk about mm -hmm, a message can be also distorted by what information that is not good. So what about, so encoding? That is when you are sending the message, there is a, the receiver encodes. it. And this one is what the process of transferring the information you want to communicate into a form that can be sent and coded according to the, at the uh, at your end. So your success and encoding depends partly on your ability Mm, to convey information clearly and what simply, but also on your ability to anticipate and eliminate the source of information, confusion. So when you are communicating with people, as you can see, encoding and decoding. Mm, so encoding means what? So for example, make sure you know your audience. Because if you don't you know don't know your audience, then you can you can you can make Write something that the audience will not like. And you know whether they are children, whether they are adults. So if you know the audience, it is then that you can also know what to write, the information that you can give at that time. So knowing the audience is very important in communication. A time's up indicates us and gestures approval. So it, it depends on the where you find yourself in. So when you do that, a time of you know, indicates what all and gestures approval in the United States. Hi. In the United States, but it's obscene in what in the Middle East. So that is also what knowing your audience. Where Hi. Wherever they are coming from. Mm -hmm. So okay, here yeah, means what money in Japan, but okay means what here in Ghana means what, okay. This it's, it's okay. So I'm, it's well with me. It's, yeah. So how about the use of what? Hello, ASAP and all these short forms. No, no. Mm -hmm. Laugh out loud as soon as possible in written communications. That's your audience that understand all these. Mm -hmm. You also need to what no. It's boys and towards knowing your audience and using the right thing at the right time. So the medium used to convey the message is the channel and it can target any of the receiver senses. It is important for the channel to be appropriate for the message and it could help make the intent of the message clearer. So messages are we convey through channels with verbal face-to-face -face meetings. It can also be through third person delivering the message. It can through all telephone and video conferencing as you can see on the screen. 
and written the test. We are also now, now this written the test and all those things are now coming out. Yeah, we are we want to move from that end. Now we are using more of test messages, WhatsApp messages, emails. Mm -hmm. So different channels have different strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So it means you can choose whatever channel that you want to convey your message. And so the message can be can say. Oh, So as I was saying, the message can be sent to the receiver through the auditory channel, visual channel, kinesthetic channel. In the auditory, as I say, it consists of spoken words and other verbal cues. The visual involves, is more sight, which in turn allows for visual. And you know, nurses use all these things, three channels mm, and mm, receiving your message. Kinesthetic channel refers to the physical sensation. So when you touch people, the sensation that's different, that is kinesthetic. The kind of, mm. and as I said, nurses use all this channel mm, to communicate with the patient. The receiver is the third component of the or the element of the communication process is the listener who must listen, observe, and attend to the message. So the person is the recorder who must perceive what the sender intended. That is the interpretation of the message. So as I said, the receiver, your message is delivered to individual members your audience is very important. So no doubt you have in mind the actions or reaction you hope your message will get from the audience. That's the message is being sent to. When you're sending a message, also keep in mind that each of these individuals enters into the communication process with ideas, feelings, that will undoubtedly influence what their understanding of your message. So it's very important. So, let your message, the receiver, receive the message, and the message is well what understood. So the message should be what clear for the receiver to be able to what interpret what the message is about and act appropriately. What the message that you sent. Okay. So what is the coding? The coding. So I've just as successful encoding is so we have encoding and decoding. They are all skills. Mm -hmm. You need to take time to read messages carefully. 
or listen actively to it. So that is why active listening and communication is very important. It's crucial. So just as confusion can arise from errors in what encoding, it can also arise from decoding. Mm, these errors can also arise from decoding. So when you're decoding the message, you need to be also know the intent and make sure your message is very clear. So as I said, errors can arise from decoding errors. And this is particularly what's the case if the decoder doesn't have enough knowledge to understand the message or interpret it correctly. Mm -hmm. So for example, answer this question. Okay, let's see, let's go about this. Um, is there any federal law about a man marrying his? Sister, law? How about this one? Let's see. So there's no law to have a widow, he'd have to be dead. You can't marry. Okay, let's go on. These are the responsibilities of the receiver. Listen actively as a receiver. You need to listen actively when you're receiving it. Be sensitive to the sender. Indicate an opportunity and appropriate medium and initiate feedback. So as I said, according to what it refers to the receiver's understanding.
that's what I was saying, feedback. Confirmation of the message provides feedback. That is the evidence that the receiver has what understood the intended what message. And you know, feedback can neither be what verbal or non-verbal, as you can see from the screen. So your audience would what provide you feedback, verbal, it can be verbal or non-verbal reactions. To, to your communicated what message. And as a receiver, you also need to what? You pay close attention to this feedback mm, as a sender. Mm. As it is the only thing that allows you to what? To be confident that your audience has what? Well understood your message. And if you find that there has been a misunderstanding, at least you have the opportunity to send the message for a second time. It's very important. So it is very, as I was saying, your audience will provide your, you with what your feedback. And you also need to pay attention, close attention to this feedback. Whether your audience were, were they, they understood whatever you said, or you the only they also need what clarification. And if the message intended was not what the message sent was not what it's intended for, you have a certain opportunity, a second chance to what to send another message. Okay, so this is how um, the current <coughs> characteristics of effective feedback. You need to be specific, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. What message that you are sending be specific and rather than what's general, so that the people will what. And you, know, you can also describe whatever you want them to what understand. So you need to describe the message very well. You need also provide a supportive, non threatening manner. Giving in a timely manner. Practical and appropriate for the world. It should be practical and appropriate for the individual client. And it should be clear and unambiguous, direct and honest. So these are some of the effective so factors that influence communication process. When we are developing, mm, development is very important. So when 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 we are going up, going up is very important. Gender, values and perception, personal space, territoriality, roles and relationships, environment and congruence all influence what the communication process. So what, what are we saying about development? When language and communication skills develop through stages. So communication techniques for children, you can play with them. You can draw, you can paint, you can sculpt, sculpture, do you sculpture work then? You can also tell them story, games and all those things. But when you leave them as the nurse is doing, when the patient and client is on the ward, the child, it's not only what, providing your words, doing your task but also you also have to, the clients in mind clients oriented you can also play with them when you are free you can also draw paints when you are in the children's world you can also sometimes tell them stories mm -hmm. so when they are the, the children are growing as parents when you leave them like that sometimes it is them that they they can develop some that you will not be aware. Don't leave them alone. Be with them, play with them, know their preferences and what they like and, and give them what they want. It's very important. Then the gender, females and males communicate differently from the early stage. So boys establish independence, they negotiate their status. But you know, girls seek confirmation and they want intimate sports, relationship, mm -hmm. intimacy. So look at the picture you can see from what the boys and the 
Then the social cultural characters, culture, culture can influence individual people, education and economic level. They all can influence people. So our social cultural what characteristics like we we don't do this, we don't do this. So when um there's a patient on the ward, some some patients will not allow if they are men, they will not allow um female nurses to attend to them so when it comes to that so you need to also what communicate to them and you know their cultural what preferences then their values and perception also can influence the communication process you know values are the standard that influence your behavior And so perceptions, personal view of an event. So our perception also can also influence. So for you know, you know, um, each person has what a unique personality trait, values, experiences. That violates mm -hmm. the value uh, validates their their development, their values and their perceptions. And you know, as individual, we, we in life we experience all this in our lives. So, for example, if the nurse draws the curtains around a crying woman and leaves her alone, the woman may interpret this as what the nurse thinks that I will. I will be what upset. So it all depends on how you treat them, how you communicate your personal view about the person. It's very important. All this can influence patient. Then the personal space. You know, when patients are on the world, they take um the space that they are they are in the bed as it belongs to them. So when you are entering their space, you also need to give them that kind of what. You know, so the personal space is the, the distant people prefer in interacting with other others. And we have the prosimus. Prosimus is the personal space. So we can have um have two, uh, these types of prosimus, intimate distance, personal distance, social distance, and public distance. So these are the distance that people would prefer in interacting with other people. So intimate distance is frequently what's used by nurses. So we want to establish that kind of intimacy with our patients. Mm -hmm. So these are the types of space or that we can have. And the intimate distance is about one feet. Then personal distance is a one to four feet when you want to measure them. You can see them intimate 0 0.5, personal distance 1.2. Social distance three, and you know when COVID came, we were advised to keep this social distance. Mm -hmm. So increase eye contact, our out of what rate of touch, we were because of the the COVID. Mm -hmm. So we were asked to what keep that kind of distance. But in a kind of setting, intimate distance is frequently used. Mm, so to establish that kind of relationship between our patients mm. and personal space often influence uh, personal uh, space often influence communication in social and professional words interaction so encroachment when you want, when you encroach into another individual personal space, it can create a lot of what tension between you and that person. 
So people want to keep their distance. And this time you can, so if, if you don't know the kind of distance that the person prefers, it can also influence their, the communication process. Territoriality can also what if affect the communication process. So, hello. Hello. Oh, Marcel. Me chat, me chat, my fro. Me, 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 So space and things can also what we are territory, Then, so as you can, you see on the, from the board, you know, in a in a kind of setting, we can also what protect the patient. Mm -hmm. when you use the curtains as a demarcation. Mm -hmm. So curtains around the bed unit, remove chair to use to another bed. And so when the patient is in his her, her territory, when you are going towards the patient, individual considers as what? They below, uh, this, this demarcation when the bedside, they, they, considered as, they consider it as what? The, for them. So when you are going there, you don't just pop in there. You can knock before entering that space. They will appreciate it. Mm. And when even you are removing something, mm, for example, like a chair to use at another bed, let them also be aware. Mm. They need that kind of what privacy and that respect. Then the rules and regulation is also can also affect the relationship. The, uh, the, the, okay, so the rules and relationship between sender and receiver affects the communication process as well. Mm -hmm. You will show your role as a nurse, such as um, nursing students and instructor, the client and the primary care provider, or parents and what the child affects the what the content and response in the communication process. So you know the choice of words that you use, the sentence structure, mm -hmm, and the tone of voice, they can all vary considerably from the role to another role. So as, as, as a nurse, you can see from the board. Mm -hmm. So whenever you first meeting the patient, it depends on the kind of relationship that you develop mm -hmm. with that kind of, with the patient. They can be formal with colleagues, formal with administrators, and then you can also, the, the, the length of that kind of a relationship. It is your role mm -hmm. as a nurse to establish that kind of what, relationship between you, the sender, and the receiver. And so the, um, the specific relationship between the communicators uh, is very significant. The nurse who meets with a client for the first time communicates what differently from the nurse. Hello, madam. That's what, yes. Madam, please, I have a question. You can do what? Madam, please, I want to ask a question. Yes, ask. Okay. Madam, please, I became confused from the personal space, territoriality, and then rules and regulations. Please, what are they under? What are they what? Like... I wanted to ask, like, what are they talking about? The personal hey, I'm space. I'm still talking about the factors that influence communication process, and roles oh, and relationships okay. are also part of the factor that okay. can also what influence the communication influence. process. 
I've listed yes, all please. the factors and I'm just explaining them. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. So environment is also one of the factors that can also influence what? The communication process. Mm -hmm. The environment in which we find ourselves mm -hmm. can facilitate effective what? communication. So get, don't, don't get lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still on uh, factors influencing the communication process. I'm just exp uh, explaining the point that you saw on the slide. Mm -hmm. Yes, so please. as I said, environments. So um, environments, mm, people usually what? Communicate most effectively in a comfortable what? environment. So it depends on us, the nurses. When you're able to create a comfortable environment for the patient to thrive in, it's very important. They need what factors. So they, they, the key factors that can influence what the patient in his or her environment can be what when you comfort them, they always also always need what privacy, privacy. Mm -hmm. So what parents they need that putting yourself in the shoes of what that person. Okay, then congruence is also part of what is a one a key factor influencing the communication process. Congruence. So in congruent communication, the verbal and non-verbal aspect of the message have to match. Mm? So when you are talking, when you, you you raise your hand, when you do this, when you do this, it has to match. It shouldn't be different from one another. Mm. So when we are in congruence with communication, as I said, the verbal and nonverbal aspect of the message has to match. Clients more what? So clients, uh -huh, they more really trust the nurse when they perceive the communication as what congruent when the verbal and nonverbal aspect of communication matches. Mm. So verbal and November aspect much seen by the nurse and the client. And incongruence is what sends us through meaning in body language. It's, as I said, it must match. Then we can also improve nonverbal communication by us relaxing, that we use gestures judiciously. Practice, get feedback on nonverbal communication and our attitude. And people always talk about our nurse's attitude. They always talk about our nurse's attitude. I don't know, but hmm. so attitude can also what influence the communication process. You know, interpersonal attitudes hmm, convey beliefs thoughts and feelings. It can also caring, warm, respect, acceptance can also what facilitate communication. Mm -hmm. So condescending, uh, condescension, lack of trust, coldness can inhibit what communication. Effective nursing communication <laughs> can significantly what relates to the client what satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And clients also want you to treat them with what respect. So as for nurses, we can sometimes we can they, they say we have bad attitude or good attitude, but with the, in the interpersonal attitude, you convey beliefs, uh, talks, and feelings. And caring attitude, caring, want, respect, assist, acceptance, they all what facilitate communication. But when we are being what condescending, mm. when they show lack of interest in the patient care, when you are being cold, patient, all mm. this can inhibit what communication. So patients are satisfied when they, 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 are, they receive what effective nursing communication with when, and with also showing them kind of respect. Mm. So what are the levels of communication? We have the intrapersonal communication, 
interpersonal communication, group communication, and interdisciplinary communication. Okay. So what do we understand by intrapersonal? Intrapersonal communication. What do you understand by intrapersonal communication? Okay, so Belinda, are you are you around? Unmute yourself and talk. Yes, ma'am. Belinda. Yes, yeah, unmute yourself and talk. Okay, please, I'm here. Yes. Um, so what do you intra... understand by intrapersonal communication? Okay, by what my understanding, intrapersonal yes. communication refers to a communication between oneself, like you are talking to yourself, yeah. communication yeah. with your own soul. Okay, good. Okay, yes. Okay, Abdul Razak, what do you have to say? You can I meet yourself and talk? Abdul, are Hello. you there? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. yeah, it is a communication that happens within the individual. That what? Happens within the individual. Individual? What, what, means, what do you mean by individual? Like within oneself. Within oneself. Yes. So, so what about interpersonal communication? Interpersonal between two or more people. What? <laughs> okay, okay, good. Let's go on. So, you are all right, as you said. Interpersonal communication, also known as self talk. Hello. Group communication. Yes. So as you said, intrapersonal communication is also known as self-talk. And it's the communication that happens within the, as you said, within the individual. So it is a way of people talk to themselves. That is intra. Then interpersonal is a process that occurs between two or more people, as you rightly said. Then for group communication, this includes small group and organizational group communication when making Mm, then interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinary, it means what? You know that you know it's 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 it occurs amongst what various groups. So with it, as we said, so the interdisciplinary communication it consists of the clients and the family and all healthcare personnel. Example: so we have what the social worker, physical uh, therapists, occupational. So within the healthcare. Within even the, the setup of the healthcare, we have all these people working together to meet what patients go. Or we are all working together. Oh, madam. If, yes. Hello, talk. Um, please, I want to know. I want to know if imagination, like you, you being in imagination um state is is an example of um intra communication. What when you imagine yourself? Ah, yes, you it can be intra communication. So you want to think about okay, I'm imagining things, but sometimes when you are imagining, it can even come out. But ah, are this this person is it correct? Uncle is going. Is it correct? Go and tell Madam Mary. Okay, please. Okay, Madam Mary. So when you're imagining, but still you are talking within yourself. So maybe it can be an example of what it's all. But sometimes, let's say, oh, hmm, you are even there. You are thinking within yourself. I want to go to school. And then at the same time, I want to also marry. Then you are, you are talking yourself. So as, as you said, you can imagine something and you'll be thinking about it. So I think it's part of 
self talk and you know when you don't take care sometimes it can come out and people will be saying ah this person is incorrect you see he's talking within herself or himself but this is it's a type of what a communication mm -hmm. are you okay so as I said, the interdisciplinary occurs within my organization, like we find ourselves in the healthcare setting. And in the healthcare setting, we have so many people there, groups, they're working to achieve patient what? Care, to achieve patient uh, health, quality of health. So we can have within the, the healthcare setting, we have what? The social worker, the physical therapist, occupational therapies, we have the nurses, we have all these people. They are involved in providing care. So and each member of the team performs important roles in the healthcare system need to achieve patient health healthcare. So so these are that that these are the levels of so not yes Hello. You can talk. Um, I still have some able. You can you can unmute yourself and talk, or do, you don't have anything to share. Okay. So, what are the most common ways? or method on how we communicate with people around us. What are the most common ways or method on how we communicate with people with us? The most common way. Hello, people. Are you there? Hello. Yes. Yes. Yes, okay, so I'm right. asking a question. Yes, if somebody can yes, answer, sister. what are the most common ways yes, or methods of how we communicate with people around us? The modes of communication. Modes of communication. Verbal. Verbal communication. Okay. Okay. Yes, so when I'm supposed to close, I'm supposed to close at seven fifteen, right? Yes. Madam, we are hungry. We are hungry. Nice question. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. But I will be discussing how long.
Oh, okay, sorry. They are disturbing me. Huh. Okay, so you said... Hello. Hello, madam. Welcome back. Madam, if you can hear you. Okay. They are just disturbing me. Okay, so let's go through them one after the other. I, mean, I don't know. We won't finish, but we'll, we'll, we'll try something out. Okay, well, these are the modes of communication, as you said, verbal and non-verbal. Mm -hmm. huh? Verbal and non-verbal. So the verbal communication. Hmm? And according to Penrose, verbal communication consists of sharing our thoughts. Huh? And the meaning of the words. And according to Bovi and others also say that verbal communication is the expression of information through language, which is composed of words and grammar. So according to this is Bovi and Co. So this is the verbal communication. Verbal communication. Then so what is verbal communication? We have oral and written communication. It's verbal communication. Oral and written communication. So as you can see from the screen, person is writing and this one is all sharing information verbally with her colleagues. Okay. So in oral communication, spoken words are used. And it includes face-to-face -face, mm, conversations, speech, face-to-face -face conversations, speech, telephone conversation, video conferencing, radio, television, voice over internet conversations. And communication is also what's influenced by the pitch, the volume, speed, and clarity of speaking. Mm -hmm. Oh, ah. oh. <laughs> Okay, so these are some of the advantages of communicate uh, rural communication. Rural communication. So it brings quick feedback. In a face-to-face -face conversation, by reading facial expression and body language, one can place you are disturbing. One can whether he or she should trust what is being said or not. So there's trust in here. More personal and formal makes immediate impact. Helps us correct our message according to the feedback and non-feedback issue. So these are some of the advantages. You can also see the disadvantage here. So once you utter a word, you cannot take it back. So that is why I said it's irreversible. Ah! Oh! It can be forgotten easily. There is no legal evidence of plural communication. What about written? Written communication. So written signs or symbols are used to communicate. So that is written communication, as you can see.
Okay. Uh -huh. And your written communication can be transmitted through the email, letters, reports, memo. Mm -hmm. You know, most communicate more common form of communication being used in what's business that is the written communication. When you're in business, these are some of the advantages of written communication. Create a permanent record when you write them, unless you want to destroy them. But when you keep them well, it's become permanent, allows you to share, to store information for future references. So when you store it well, you can use them for future references. Easily distributed, all recipients receiving the same information at the same time. The written communication helps in not laying down apparent principles, policies, and rules for running of organization. It is a permanent means of what communication does. It is useful where record maintenance is what when you want to maintain record, you keep them well. And it's more precise and what explicit. So these are the advantages. And it's advantages. Oh, too much paperwork and email burden is what involved. Then written communication is not safe upon the cost if the receiver receivers of the communication of the message are separated by distance and if they are not, if they need to clear their doubts, the response is not spontaneous. It will take it will take some more time. Written communication is time consuming as the feedback is not immediate. Then written communication, poor skills and quality have a negative impact on organizational now it's reputation. And you know, sometimes in our in a, in a work environment, we need to have a common etiquette in writing or in written communication. You focus on the format. So in this um, organization, this is the format. So the various formal uh, writing forms have a predetermined universally word, accepted format that accompanies. So in this organization, this is what we normally do when we are writing messages. Mm -hmm. And so you focus on the format structuring of the contents. You need to structure the contents was all right. While writing, one should ensure that the content is well organized. Mm -hmm. Then also ensure connect when it's connect connectivity mm -hmm. of the of the of the message. Mm -hmm. So the content that comprises a piece of write, a writing should reflect fluency. It's very important and should be connected through a logical flow of thoughts in order to prevent what misinterpretation and catch the attention of the reader. Catch the attention of the reader. And you need to steer what's clear of short form. It's not below a sub and all those. If your audience understand all this. Thanks. The short shortcuts of all this. So you need to, people may not be aware of the meaning of various short forms, yeah? the shortcuts and all the forms. Will the audience understand all these forms? So you need to what? Stay out of this and you need to be clear of short forms. And make that find it difficult to interpret them. Mm -hmm. And the importance of what? Grammar, spelling, and punctuation. So if you don't take care, this can spoil the meaning and the content of your message. So improper grammar, spelling, and punctuation can at worst cause miscommunication. And at least result in unwanted humor and should be thus avoided. And being creative is also very important. Creativity. In order to hold the researcher's attention, one needs to be what's creative. 
sometimes when you see some people written with communication, it's boring reading. But when it's, there's some kind of what creativity in there, people can also show much attention you know, in reading in there. Clumsy and all those things make it with the reading boring. So creative to break the tendium of what's writing and prevent monotony from creeping in. You also avoid excessive use of jargon. Yeah, like that in our in, in our healthcare setting, we always use what we we, we always try to avoid words jargons because the audience, some of the audience, the audience especially in our cases, what our patients will not understand some of the jargons that we use. So excessive use of jargon can put off what the reader. So you must avoid all these things. So avoiding. So this is how the etiquette in writing. And good writing features completeness, correctness, credibility, clarity, conciseness, and consideration and validity. So these are the good writing features. And types of writing. We have the emails, we have letters and memos, agendas, reports, promotional material, academic documents as you are doing when you get to your yeah, four to you do your research for an academic mm -hmm. academic documents oh, research yeah. scientific oh, 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 so in terms of hey. Yeah, we are talking about communication etiquette, and you are, you are just displaying this part of that. Oh, baby. Two people. You are not, are you? You are all grown up, so you don't have, uh -huh. yeah. I'm not supposed to tell you what to do. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Keep quiet and, and listen. What is that? Ah. Oh. Okay, so effect of verbal communication. So effects, all speaking, reading or written word is affected by your attention as you are doing now. Attention and what? Your concentration, your language compatibility. We are all speaking English, so it's okay for you. Verbal, so when we have different language background, it is then it can affect the communication. Then the verbal skills, hearing and visual acuity, people that not have this impairment. And the environment, when you have a noisy environment, when you now have a serene environment, it can also affect communication. Your motor function, your sensory distractions, Interpersonal attitude, literature, and culture can all influence, affect verbal communication. So when you're using verbal communication, Madam, you need to consider these factors, the pace and the rhythm and intonation. This indicates interest, anxiety, boredom, or fear. The simplicity, we always tell you that use simple words. Mm -hmm. Use simple words that is also clear. Culture affects verbal communication. How does what? Culture. Culture affects verbal communication. I can't hear you. Your character. The way oh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are portraying. Sometimes distractions, you don't want reading, you don't want to go through it. So it depends on the individual's character. You have some characters that can that can influence I, I, them. I'm talking about the culture. Uh, communication positively and others culture, that can culture. also work. Madam, he says culture. Ah, ah I said I, <laughs> I thought we were saying character. So we have different what cultures. We have different cultures. Some people don't want. Uh, as I was uh, telling you from the beginning, some people don't uh, 
uh, in the in the in our culture, what sometimes when we, whatever we say or we 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 we, we exhibit can also influence somebody. As I said, uh, the example that I gave earlier, when thumbs ups in our culture, when we use thumbs up, it indicates we are doing well. But in other culture, it shows what we are being disrespectful. You understand? Mm? So, so whatever you say, you also have to be careful because whatever sometimes, whatever you say may mean different things. Mm? To different people in various what cultures. That is what I mean by your culture. Mm? Uh, Whatever you say. Again, can you, Madam? Can you be best more about mm -hmm. the on the motor function and then the sensory distractions? You want us to go back? Why won't you go and read? Go and read. You want everything to be given by you. That is why nowadays we have internet, we have all those things. So it can help you to what get more messages. So what okay, let's see what 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 are you saying? You said what? So when 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 the motor function is not functioning well, it can affect your understanding of whatever is being communicated. People that have this defect, that kind of effect. We have this kind of uh, people. With so many months when growing up, they have what different what different. Even when even in, uh, adult people, their motor function is different from those uh, you mm -hmm. and children with what autistic and all those things. They are motor, they are, they are, they are, their brains are not what, functioning well, and they cannot they can affect what communication. Whatever you say to them, they will not understand. They will not get them. Are you okay? And even even older people, when they are getting old, sometimes your brain is not functioning well. You can have um this kind of what diseases, Alzheimer's and all those things. It can affect what your oral was. Communication. You will not understand what is being said to you. You understand? Hello. Are you okay? Hello, the Hello. person that asked the persons. Yes, please. You will yes, not mind please. me. Hello. So when you are my going... My next up, question. Yes, please. Uh -huh. Yes, the next person. Another person. Are we, are, we, are, we are okay. No, no, not a question. I was, I was trying to uh, help him. The, the, the culture, how, how the, the, the culture can affect communication. For example... Uh, oh, so, you know, culture refers to what? The common lives are the language, behavior, and patterns, traditions, and beliefs that can be learned and passed from one generation to the another generation. So sometimes... You do, you, you, hello? Are you listening? Uh, or you, are, you want to contribute? I want to contribute. Okay, okay, come on. Yeah. Uh, like some some of the cultures, for example, like the use the usage of some words uh, are considered as rude and unacceptable in the uh, yes in the society, and hence yes, uh, that's what I or, said. Or yes. maybe a particular group of people, you can't use certain language uh, among them. So when you are standing, mm -hmm. you, are, you you will be careful with the use uh, the choice of words that you are you use. When you yes, come to ask, I, I, yes. Okay. Yes. So that is what yes. I said. I said culture refers to the common life source, the languages, the behavior, huh? behavior patterns and traditions, and beliefs. Mm. So that are learned and, and passed from one generation to another generation. So when we are taking, so the first step. Mm, Towards what cultural competence is requires becoming, you need to be aware mm, of your own personal cultural beliefs and identify your prejudices and attitude. It's very important. So in the healthcare system, it's a culture with we have our own culture. So the healthcare system is a culture with its own words, the customs, values, and what language. So you try to remain aware. Mm, Try to what, remain aware of these cultural variations in all the uh, our healthcare, in all the 
on all people, all the religions and all the organizations, the people where they are coming from. You need to also what try to remain aware of these cultural variations and be careful to use lay term terminology yeah. when speaking with patients. So unless the patient is what is known to be healthcare professional. So that is what I'm talking about, the culture. You need to be aware, as the, the other person also said. Yes, it's very important. Are you okay now? And also the motor function. So with the cognitive impaired patient, they present a special communication challenges. Mm -hmm. So for, for example, an elderly patient who has what? Asphasia. Mm -hmm. Asphasia and what? I can say they due to pain from what? And obsessed to whatever, whatever. You need to be also what? Be careful with all those. And these things can affect what? Communication, verbal communication. So that is what I meant by motor function, sensory distractions, and call a culture. Okay, are you okay now? Can I go on? Yes, yes please. Hello. Can yes, I go on? Yes, yes. yes madam, go on. Okay. Please go on. So I said you need to be uh, simple, clear, uh, clear, and the time that you also in, uh, talk to the patient, then adaptable to the patient's attitudes or trends. Credible is always be what credibility is very important. Always what be honest. Uh, then humor, humor. Okay, I think November, I can remember also. We can't, okay, if we can finish this. November communication. So when we are trying to understand communication, words are only part of the story. Mm -hmm. To analyze it properly, you need to see and feel what is being said as well. Okay, so only 7% of meaning is in the words spoken. That's 8%. Of meaning is what power linguistics the way they that's the word are said then 55 percent is in facial expression okay so now what is nonverbal communication nonverbal communication so it is nonverbal communication includes any communication occurring without the use of words Words that is not verbal communication. So it is a communication that takes place through nonverbal cues, through such form as what nonverbal communication as gestures, eye contact, whatever. So these are the characteristics of nonverbal communication. And you know, nonverbal communication presents in most interpersonal conversations. So, yes. It conveys more information than verbal communication. So, and it's usually believed over verbal communication as it is harder to hide or speak from the verbal communication. So, so these are some of the characteristics of my, what are the different types of nonverbal communication? Hmm? So these are the types. Nonverbal communication, we have what? The paralinguistics, that is the tone of voice, the pitch and the loudness. We also have the eye contacts. Eye contact, postures, postures, arm crossing, leg crossing, seating position. These are all posted. Then the facial expression, the smile, the frown. Then the gestures. We have the difference between gestures and postures. Hand movements, winking, nodding. These are the appearance, that is clothing, hairstyle, choice of colors. So these are all here. So forms of nonverbal communication. We have the kinesthetic. Hmm? Kinesics, communication through body language. Oculesis, communication through eye contact and gaze. Then also have haptics, haptics, communication through the use of touch or body contact. Then mm. we have proximity, space and distance. We talk about it and the use of space, communication through the use of time within a culture, phonemics. Then we have chromatics, the use of colors. They also have power language, 
communication that accompanies speech. So that these are the forms of non-verbal communication. As you can see, kinesis is what, as you can see, the study of the communicative dimension of facial and body movement. So we had the body language, the facial expression, postures, gestures, body movement, clothing, style, and accessory. These are all you can see from the body, the, the, the kinesis, the, the various dimensions of facial and body movements displays on what? On the screen, as you can see from the people. Mm. Then the oculus is a study of what the way eyes are used during what, and it's very important in our healthcare setting between our patients and what's nurses and patients. Mm. Uh, Okay, so eye contact, a key, the characteristics of what? Nonverbal communication, that the expression match without using what? A single word. So eye contact also establish the nature of what? A relationship between the nurse and the doctor, like the nurse and the patient. We also have the facial expression. Facial expression are the key characteristics also of nonverbal communication. Your facial expression can communicate. It can communicate if whether you are happy, whether you are sad, anger, fear, uh, otherwise. So these are some of the examples of what forms of what. Then the facial expression you can see, this usually convey emotions. And there are six universal emotions that we have. Mm, we have six universal emotions. Surprise, fear, sadness, anger, happiness, and disgust. These are all six universal emotions by official expressions. So official management techniques. So these are some of the techniques that you can see. Intensifying, disintensifying, naturalizing. Masking. Mm -hmm. To exaggerate a feeling, if you intensify your feeling, disintensify it to underplay a feeling, naturalizing to have neutralizer, to hide a feeling and mask them to replace or substitute the expression of one emotion or another. So what are the function of the eye? You monitor feedback, secure the attention and interest of audience, regulate or control conversation, signal nature of relationship, compensate for increased physical activity. So these are the functions of eye contacts. Okay, so we can leave this one. Okay, uh -huh. gestures. It's a characteristic of nonverbal communication in which what visible body actions communicate particular message. So gestures include movement of the hands, the face, as you can see, the gestures that they are displaying, or uh, all other part of the body. And you know, body gestures can use emblems, illustrators, affair displays, regulators, and adapters. Mm -hmm. So these are some examples of what gestures that you can see on the appearance. You know, appearance is face match mm -hmm. and can judge us. So we make instant judgments based on appearance. This process is known as what? Impression formation impression formation. So mm -hmm. an inf informal or untidy appearance will give you people the impression. So whenever you see a madman, you can also see that, ah, this person is not dressed well. So he's smart. A nurse with a uniform, ah, this is a nurse, this is a doctor. This is what, this is what. So an informal or untidy appearance would what? Give people the impression you are informal in your work aspect of life. We call, we call it what? Implicit theory. But as so dress accordingly, you can start smart and become visual, casual, but not the reverse. Hmm? Get be smart. So dress, as how I'm telling you, as nurses, dress accordingly. You can start smart and become casual, but not casual towards smart. No. But not the reverse. Okay. The haptics, the study of touch, a means of nonverbal communication. And you know, not remember, uh, the task, uh, it can be task-oriented, so the touch, we have, it can be task-oriented. 
effective or both. So the touch aspect of what type of nonverbal communication can be task oriented in a healthcare setting. <coughs> so task oriented, that is personal contact required when performing your nursing procedures as you can display, as you can see on the display. And effective demonstrates what caring and concern. So you nurse, you need to be sensitive to how client respond. That is the therapeutic use for lonely, uncomfortable, whatever. So as I said, it can be task oriented when we are when we are um, doing what task our uh, task procedures and whatever for our patient. Then it can also be affected. That is caring and concern, showing care and concern, uh, empathy. And oh, it can also be both task effective or whatever. Uh -huh. So that you see the task aspect, rented and effective parts. So with the touch, the person is performing his or her task, vital science, as you can see. So the person can touch the person. Uh -huh. Okay. Then, so these are the tasks and task. It can both be task oriented and what's effective what touch. Then function the touch is it, it, it expresses what positive emotions, playfulness, control, ritualistic. When even you are doing your nursing procedure, the bathing, the rituals. <laughs> do this first, do this first. These are all part of rituals. Huh? Okay. And problem is, is the study of what the spatial communication, and we talk about it, the, the space. We have the, the space, intimate space within, as I said, we talk about it, personal space, social space, and public space. We have the four space zone. So we have these dimensions of space. So they are saying we say that more is better than less. So we have more space. It's better than not being having just small. So it's assign importance or status based on how much space a person has. Private is better than what's public. We always patient always needs what privacy. So it is better not to have to share space. We desire to exclude people to make to mark boundaries of our space. Mm -hmm. Closing door is an important signal. That conversation is both intimate and what's important. So sometimes when you, are, you want to speak to patient or you even in your house and when you close your door, it means that you don't want any person to hear the conversation apart from the one other person that you are invited to speak with. So that is the space. And you know, higher is also better than what's lower. Image, imagery is often in terms of up and downs. Houses that are on higher land are often more what expensive. And it's a small near is better than what far. Yeah, it's better than far. So I can remember, oh, if my house, I want to get a place that is nearer to my 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 women's place. It's very important. So it is more valued to have a to have an office near the boss, it is also more valued to be at a position near the post. As a dinner party. It is in in is better than what out in home field advantage in Boston. So in is better than so. What do you mean by paralinguistics or paralanguage? Para language? So paralinguistics or para language, they are cues, they are used for forming impressions, for identifying emotional states, and for making judgment of credibility intelligence and objectivity. And this our power language is the evoker, but what but not what nonverbal dimension of speech. It refers to the way you say something rather than what you say. Mm -hmm. So by stressing different words in a sentence, you can change the meaning completely without doing anything to the structure of it. So how It's almost time, so, so it's 7.15, we'll finish. How that looks good on you? Could you move 
any slower. Okay, so let me see if, uh -huh. so the power language, as you can see, they are vocal sounds that are not actually what works. So taking a deep breath to indicate surprise, hmm, it, 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 it signifies something. Clacking the top, it depends what. They are all sounds mm, that are not actually words, but you can have meaning from it. That is the power language. Mm? Power language. So you can see the surprise, confusing. Hmm, you can see outreach. Hey, ah. So it's sometimes if you are even talking in the telephone and you see, ah, hey, hmm, you can see. Then shock, eh? Embarrassment. Mm. So these are all things. Mm, whistling, getting someone's mm, attention. Oh, these are all things. The sounds that we we that are not actually words, but we can understand its meaning when somebody when the sound can understand its meaning, what it means. This is power language. Uh, so it includes what. Pitch, stress, timing, pauses, emotional tones, accent, speech, error, speed of speech, and whatever. So interactions are usually natural, but can force better. So as you can see, these are some of the strategies for effective communication. Strategies for effective communication. You need to stop, look, empathetic, ask questions, be present, use affirmative response, be flexible. Okay, so stop, focus on the other person, their thoughts and feelings. Give your full attention to the speaker. Pay attention to nonverbal messages without letting yourself be distracted. Avoid getting distracted from the verbal messages. You also need to be, we always emphasize on empathy, not sympathy in nursing. Empathy is very important, putting yourself in that person's what's shoe and how it feels. It can happen to me, it can happen to you, it can happen to your mother, your father, your friend. So if this happens to my mother, what will I do? That is empathy. If this happens to me, if I have this pit, uh, challenge, what will I do? So that is being what? Empathetic. Imagine how you would feel in their circumstances. So you need not to be what? Run into all of their problems or issues as long as you acknowledge what they are experiencing. It's very important. Ask questions. Use questions to clarify your understanding. As well as what demonstrate interest in what is being said. And also present yourself as an equal rather than a superior. Otherwise, people will, will just don't come up with their issues. Even when you are in a position of what authority, focus on what you and other person each have to offer and contribute to the job or issue. You cannot uh, do everything by yourself. You need people around to help you. Yes. Respond to other in ways that acknowledge the experiences. And after that, you can also give them this kind of acknowledgement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank them for their inputs when because they, they, they came and they have time for you. So after that, you need to appreciate it. You need to be use affirming responses. Respond no, um, be flexible towards others. A family response is whenever you finish, acknowledge their presence, acknowledge what their experience, acknowledge uh, whatever they have done. You need to tell them you appreciate it. And be flexible towards others. Allow for other points of view and be open to other ways of doing things. So these are some of the strategies, but not all inclusive or whatever. You can add some or you can also remove some. Okay, so these are the strategies for effective communication. Do you have any question to share? To ask or contribution to share? 
Thank you.